well, I think I think there's still a lot of room to break through, um, uh, kind of melding some different technologies. Uh, what we're seeing today with with uh, DTube, uh, DTube is an example of of kind of going after the YouTube model in a decentralized manner. They're leveraging Steam uh, as a, a sort of a content management system to help organize their website, and they're leveraging IPFS, the interplanetary file system, to facilitate the hosting of their videos, and they're leveraging the rewards of the Steam token uh, to sort of fund all this operation um, and kick back, you know, tokens to the person who's doing the hosting and all that. And I think this represents a very interesting. Um, uh, an interesting opportunity in the ecosystem. There's there's a lot of untapped potential in video and in live streaming um, and in other you know uh, uh, aspects of modern day social media that are absolutely uh, pervasive and, and uh, you know viral. Um, in five years, we will see someone take over um, the video market or a large portion of it. By leveraging blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies, maybe it'll be D2, maybe it'll be someone else. But there's some behemoths out there that um, we can take market share from, and we can do it uh, on decentralized infrastructure with cryptocurrencies. So if you're looking for a big opportunity, I think you need to think big and think about going after some of the big players out there like YouTube. Um, so it's almost like any Web 2.0 company that you can imagine, you can do better with Steemit. You can do better by incentivizing the people who are participating on these on these platforms. Um, Steam is having uh, explosive growth in Korea. Uh, I was there's several um, Steamians, uh, Steam community members from Korea here today who flew here to to meet us, and so thanks for coming. And um, I have to say, there's something in the water over there in Korea. Culturally, they're just very open to the idea that you know the platforms they use should be incentivizing them to use it. And so there's nothing holding them back there culturally, and, and their growth has, you know, uh, outpaced the growth of the growth in any of the other countries that are using Steam. Um, I think that's really exciting, and um, you know, I think we'll just start to see more of that as uh, as we see the, the blockchain fever continue to take over uh, in places like this. So I have a uh, interesting question. So uh, we we're just talking backstage, and I find this. Absolutely fascinating. It's a, a startup story about how Steemit was born. So I'll just sort of ask you this question. Tell us about the lawnmower shop. Oh man, the lawnmower shop. Uh, it was actually called the Power Zone. Um, yeah, it was a great, uh, great little spot. Um, we actually, I think some people know this, we started in, in a friend's basement. Um, there were six of us at the time. And when we finally had enough money to move out of there, uh, it was because we had found a place that was just cheap enough to move into, and it just happened to be uh, the second story uh, on top of a lawnmower shop in the middle of nowhere, Virginia. Um, and uh, I look back on it fondly. You know, it was a bit of an odd location and an odd place, but uh, it was, you know, uh, some really great people in there, and uh, I got to learn a little bit about lawnmowers. Um, you know, on this journey, which is cool. Did you ever have client meetings, you know, people confused, like, oh, it's just right above the lawnmower shop, you know? <laughs> yeah, luckily we were able to stick to Google Hangout for most of the meetings. Perfect. So it's like a great story, you know, decentralized companies, you know, starting in a basement, moving to a lawnmower shop, and then it's the number one blockchain, you know, in the world. Uh, so another question that I had, and, you know, in terms of that is, you know, tell us about, you know, Steam and growth. How, how are you tracking? You have this monster platform. Um, so how are, how is your ecosystem growing? Any, any stats or numbers you could share there? Uh, one of the ones that I'm uh, happiest about is since uh, uh, around July 2016, uh, the Steam blockchain has paid out uh, more than uh, 22 million US dollar equivalents in, uh, uh, in rewards to content creators, right? That's amazing. So that's essentially social media, but actually giving rewards and incentives to the people who are producing that social media. It's the, I mean, to me, it is uh, one of the most important metrics when you think about the Steam blockchain, right? You think about the power of uh, uh, liberating people from this mutually antagonistic relationship between, uh, you know, content creators and platform owners, right? Like what you have with basically every currently existing social media platform. 
um, for us, it, it runs in exactly, the incentives have been realigned, they run in exactly the opposite direction. If you can build, if you can bring or build uh, or grow an audience on the Steam blockchain, uh, you increase the, you know, the amount that you get paid for your work, and in so doing, you increase the value of the, of the, the token for literally everyone else. So uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, that number grow and grow. And the best news, the best part of it is, is, is everyone winning. Have you ever, have you experienced any of these sort of like, uh, you know, old, let's call them old at this point, you know, what are the 10 years old, uh, social networks, any, any, fla you know, uh, flack from them? Have they reached out? Are they curious? Do you think they're going to adapt? Do you think they're going to die? How do, you, how do you see that showdown going down? Yeah, you know, uh, there's been more interest than ever since we came out with the smart media token concept. It turns out that a lot of these existing social media networks and companies had been watching us, and when they saw this, they really saw an opportunity. We're, we were basically saying, you know, look at what we've done, now you can do it too. And it turns out they had wanted to, you know, try it. And uh, so we've, we've been engaging in more and more conversations with uh, existing networks that, you know, uh, are either in their heyday or had been in their heyday six or seven years ago uh, that, you know, maybe leveraging some sort of advertising revenue model now. And they're really looking for something that can help them uh, be more aligned with their community members. Right? And they see how tokens can help them do that. They see how Steam and you know, website, uh, social network company is very aligned with the user. It's very aligned aligned with the other entrepreneurs uh, who are building around it on the same blockchain. And um, they want to share in that. It, it feels very rich to them where um, the, you know, the model based on advertising can sometimes feel uh, like you're working against your users, I think. So they're looking for new ways to, to bolster their business, look, looking for new ways to align with their community. And uh, yeah, overall, the, the feedback is, is very positive. So. I'm really looking forward to getting smart media tokens out and you know, seeing uh, you know, maybe entrepreneurs like Diego find ways to integrate it creatively into, into his application and see other new entrepreneurs use it and then maybe see some of these, um, you know, these existing social networks uh, find ways to leverage it too. So in terms of like, you know, tokenization, right? I mean, you're talking about the tokenization of everything is, is what Steam is going to empower. So, you know, we've got maybe like a couple of minutes left. What is the impact of that? Sort of what's the why behind, you know, what you're doing uh, and what does it mean for the future? My belief is that tokens begin to represent people's interests and their activities. Uh, it's sort of identity information. And then the future is tokens begin to represent the points that you've received across all the applications that you've used and all the transactions that you've done. People can get a very clear profile of what you're about and what you care about. Um, and um, you know, ultimately, I think this leads to better relationships uh, with other people. Um, you know, if we can find very meritocratic ways to distribute these cryptocurrency tokens, um, and we're working on that in smart media tokens, we'll start to see uh, value rewarded to people uh, in ways that are uh, highly proportionate and, and commensurate with the value that, that a person is bringing to a community. Um, so. You know, I, I just see tokens becoming pervasive, and you know, all these social media apps that we see today, you know, eventually they're going to be wallets. Too. Everything's going to kind of be a wallet. I, think. I don't, but it's hard to say exactly. I'm curious what Harry thinks. What do you think, Harry? Uh, for me, it's uh, like the the what what really stands out here and what wins, right? Is that this is is fundamentally. Uh, changes the way that uh, the, the, the content web works, right? Or not just the content web, but just the idea of pre human creative activity. Right now, uh, for the first time possibly, we have the ability to uh, uh, realign and more closely uh, have the rewards that people receive for the creative activity much more closely track uh, you know, the, the, the human value that, that's been created, right? The interest that other people have shown in their work actually corresponds to the, you know, the, the, the monetary, uh, you know, the, the, the token-based reward that they receive. Right? So it's like a marketplace of creative expression. Yeah, I mean, it's the closest thing to, I, I know it's corny, it sounds corny to say it, but it's the, it's the closest thing to a literal manifestation of John Stuart Mill's marketplace of ideas that we've seen yet. Uh, and that's one of the things uh, that, uh, that I just find really exciting about it. 
Amazing. Any final thoughts, Diego? Yeah, I mean, I'm really looking forward for the SMTs and for the community futures. Uh, I mean, for me, smart media tokens will be steam on steroids, so I will be able to change uh, its economics and to decide how to distribute uh, the rewards uh, throughout my community, uh, but also for my brand identity. I mean, I can really create my token um, using the power of the Steam blockchain, but uh, also getting my name, so it's going to be the Utopian token. Um, I'll be able to create more tokens if I want, so if I want to use a uh, Utopian token for rewarding contributions, I can use another token for rewarding my moderator, so uh, I mean there are endless possibilities. Uh, also, the community functionalities will be, uh, I'm, really, I'm really looking forward for, to them because um, I can, uh, my community is going to be focused on specific topics. Uh, one of the uh, main issues that I had with Utopian is that no one was, was understanding what Utopian was about because we were talking about uh, contributions to open source projects. So it's not just about uh, a social media post where you talk about yourself or what you did in your a new day. Um, so being able to focus um, the community to specific contents and to uh, target an audience that is specific to the open source movement, for me, it's going to be a great event. Absolutely.